Ladies and gentlemen, the fix is in. While many have questioned why Justin Trudeau would risk running in another election and those who suggest kind of political interference now have their worst fears put to the test as the Liberals pass new electoral reform. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. We've talked a significant amount on this channel about Justin Trudeau's uh, weird behavior when it comes to the hubris that he has to think that he stands a snowball's chance in hell of running to be the next or to continue being uh, the, the, the next four year prime minister in Canada. However, a lot of people have said that when we look at what happened in the United States, when we look at Dominion voting systems, when we look at a number of different twisted policies that have been put forward, of course, we heard about a couple weeks ago about uh, the Liberals and the NDP moving to do electoral reform. Well, the fix is now in. What everyone once thought was scary has come to light, as I certainly have said a number of times on this channel, we all know that if Justin's sticking around, he's either really stupid or he has something very sneaky planned. And of course, uh, I think that, uh, well, the, the, the plans are here. As a, uh, a viewer from the channel here, Chad B over on Twitter, um, over at uh, Nerds007, tagged me earlier saying the fix is in. Liberals ta table sweeping elections law reforms, including expanding advanced voting, targeting AI. I bet you all know what that means, but don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at how great the uh, prostitutes over at CTV are, are championing this move by the, uh, by the Liberals. The Liberals table elections law reforms aimed at making it easier to vote, harder to meddle. Really? <laughs> they want to put the words meddle in there early because let's be honest, folks, these guys are paid by Justin Trudeau. They want to make sure that... Uh, they know that this word is going to come up in the next federal election. They know this is going to be an issue. So already they're saying, oh, it's, it's harder to meddle. It's harder to get involved. Now, of course, we've seen premiers like Danielle Smith already say that we're sticking to paper ballots in Alberta. There will be no uh, mailed in ballots. There will be no shenanigans when it comes to things that we're going to do things the old fashioned way. It's the best way to, to, to make our elections more um, authentic, uh, validate them validate the legitimacy let's get into what the prostitutes have to say the federal liberal government tabled electoral reform legislation wednesday that seeks to alter the way voters cast their ballots in series of ways while proposing measures to better protect the electoral province from foreign interference and disinformation now again we've seen in the last federal election during the pandemic china in fact interfered big time with our election and <laughs> Of course, they're going to do it again. Uh, presented in the House of Commons by Public Safety, Democratic Institutions, and Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominique LeBlanc, the sweeping new bill amends to the Canadian Elections Act, quote, to make it easier for Canadians to vote in a federal election and enhance trust in the Canadians' electoral process. Um, that's all lies. <laughs> I mean, we all know. We all know it's lies. Um, when you look at where the Conservatives are now polling... I believe they're currently at like 43%. Um, there's no reason they shouldn't get a majority. It's going to be interesting, again, with the meddling title, what happens. While not a full-scale overhaul of the federal voting system, as Prime Minister Justin Trudeau once promised, when it comes to an electoral participation, Bill C-65 proposes to add two additional days of advanced voting, giving Canadians a total of seven days to cast their ballot, improve the vote-by-mail special ballot process, including by allowing voters who registered for but did not use their special ballot to vote in person on Election Day with safeguards to prevent double voting, uh, make 2015 pilot vote-on-campus program permanent, offer dedicated on-site voting for elections and long-term care, including allowing staff to identify the best day and time for residents to vote, give voters who require assistance, such as those with disabilities, rendering them unable to mark their ballot, the choice of who may help them when voting and move the 2025 fixed October election date to the following Monday to not conflict with Diwali. Because we'd hate to, we'd hate to um, 
have an election day on a holiday that isn't part of Canada's national heritage. Now, look, if you celebrate Diwali, I'm happy for you. I celebrate it, enjoy it, love it, but this is not a Canadian holiday, no matter how you sum it up. There's no reason you can't have a federal election on this day. If you feel differently, you're entitled to that just as I am with my opinion. I, I don't see why. This is just more virtue signaling as far as I'm personally concerned. Uh, but further, the government is promising to take steps towards allowing voting at any polling station in an elector's riding, as well as to further study the measures needed to allow an expanded three-day voting period during general elections eventually. Now, the problem with that is that it's more organized when you must go to a specific polling site because they're able to get down to a fine needle point who from what residents voted. Uh, they have records of all of everyone's addresses, um, who showed up, who didn't. They've got the ballot boxes. If you can go randomly anywhere, well, that poses a bigger problem because the list is now blown out, which would allow for meddling. <laughs> LeBlanc said Elections Canada raised concerns about fully enacting these two measures, included the Liberal NDP confidence and supply agreement. Right now, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh and the Prime Minister very much wanted to have a three-day voting period of Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, LeBlanc said. Elections Canada came to us with some thoughtful operational challenges, he said, citing concerns around finding suitable polling locations available over a weekend. As a result, election officials are being mandated to set out an exploratory process and come back to Parliament by 2027, so after the next federal election, with the aim of making further changes by 2029. Here we go with the AI bit. Going beyond what was in a two-party pact, LeBlanc's bill adds another liberal pledge and new efforts to shore up future elections from foreign meddling. For example... Bill C-65, the Electoral Participation Act, also stitches in Canada Elections Act amendments aimed at expanding key protections against foreign interference, including banning any foreign entity from unduly meddling or influencing Canadians to refrain from casting a ballot for a potential candidate or eligible party beyond the election period. Um, so how did we have the interference in the last election then? What about the uh, Winnipeg Lab incident where... We normally don't allow people to meddle in our personal information, yet that happened too. Uh, prohibiting contributions through money orders, prepaid gift cards, and crypto assets along new third-party contribution rules, which again, the liberals can get around, uh, and clarifying rules around impersonation to include the misuse of AI or deep fakes. Again, it's not going to matter because... They're going to use Dominion machines. They're going to use every trick they have up their sleeve. This is all just trying to give you the illusion that they care when really all of these are being bent to their advantage when it comes to the next federal election. The Elections Act has to evolve with new technologies, LeBlanc said, and there's a real concern around the world we've seen in other jurisdictions around the potential use of deepfakes that can have a very serious impact on an election. It's certainly something that the security services talk to me about. However, questions remain on whether the new deepfake and disinformation measures will be responsive enough to address incidents that may arise in the midst of elections. Given the investigatory time needed with a government official who briefed reporters on background and citing that the Canada Elections Act can only do so much. And again, this is where I say a lot of these processors are being put in to make it sound like they're doing a lot when really... They're just finding ways to put out there and the, saying, hey, we're, we're taking care of all this stuff so that when our shady results come in, there's no need to question them. There's no need to run audits. There's no need to have um, inquiries or, or um, <laughs> anything to those measures like we've seen with the prime minister scandals. Because, well, we've done everything we can to seal it all up and the RCMP will cover it up as much as they need to. Uh, it says here, when it comes to the cases where verifiably false statements regarding election activities are knowingly made, an official said that if an offense is determined, it could be punishable as a summary conviction of up to $20,000 or prison for up to one year. If it's a conviction on indictment, it could be $50,000 or prison up to five years. The Election Act in the, as is the country's fundamental legal framework regulating Canada's electoral process. Uh, it is administered by Chief Electoral Officer and Elections Canada, while the compliance and enforcement elements are overseen by the Commissioner of Canada Elections. The government says that Wednesday's package of reforms are 
informed by recommendations from these individuals. <laughs> Lessons learned from 2019 and 2021 federal elections, as well as the evolving global and domestic context. Well, it's funny that those lessons were learned from two of the elections Justin Trudeau ran and got min minority governments in, isn't it? Another major addition to the bill is planned to impose new privacy policy requirements for federal political policies. Party privacy has for years been a preoccupation for politicos and information protection advocates who have warned Canada's regime is lagging behind. Under a past round of election law changes, the Liberal government made it so political parties had to post their privacy policies online, but stopped short of subjecting parties to tougher privacy rules and oversight of the data they harvest from the electorate despite calls to do so. Again, this is how we end up with Chinese interference. Now federal parties are expected to abide by new safeguards, such as using locked filing cabinets. <laughs> Here we go. Limiting access to voter contact information, disclosure requirements in the event of a significant privacy breach, and tougher enforcement measures, including administrative monetary penalties. Then here it is, the hope to pass in time for 2025. Of course they do because this is where it's going to benefit them the most. Reforms to the elections law can become contentious, and it remains to be seen how this expensive package goes over with other parties. Speaking to reporters Wednesday, LeBlanc and his NDP counterpart, Daniel Blackie, indicated a desire to see these measures passed in time for them to come into effect for the next federal election, because again, they can't question, or they, they can't have us questioning the shenanigans, because they'll say, all these safeguards are in place. Um, after leading negotiations for his party, on this bill, the NDP was pushing the Liberals to enact. Uh, Blakey announced last month that he would vacate his seat on Parliament Hill as of March 31st. Uh, anyone who's worked on a campaign knows that there are often Canadians who are struggling to balance the obligations of work and family in a day, as well as going to the polling stations to be able to vote, he said. Uh, these election law altercations also come years after heightened attention around the integrity of Canada's electoral process and amid an ongoing national public inquiry into foreign interference in relation to the last two federal campaigns, which again, they said that they, um, they, they're learning from their mistakes from those. I don't think so. I think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think things are going to get more insane. And again, while I still think the conservatives are simply polling too high as of right now for any kind of interference to not be questioned if it was done on a radical scale, um, I definitely think we'll see some form of shenanigans when it comes to the next federal election. Um, we're not out of the woods yet, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Are they going to uh, are they going to mess around in the next election? Are we going to have a fair election? I already know what the answer is going to be, but let me know your thoughts down below, ladies and gentlemen. If this is the first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Uh, make sure as you're hitting that bell or the subscribe button, turn on your bell for notifications. Join us here every Friday for Friday Night Fringe at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Central, where we're going to go over everything that happened this week, everything coming up in the week ahead, and a little bit of back and forth with the community. It's always great to see new folks in the chat as well as our longtime members, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.